Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us today. We have Shauna Lynn, and she is an amazing coach, and she helps empowered women, and today she's going to talk about empowered women and how to cope with burnout. So I'm very excited to tap into this topic. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey. They're going to have over 100 exhibitors, and they're looking for a few more exhibitors, so if you want to participate, there'll be a number in the description box that you can call them. And also there'll be a lot of free natural products there. There'll be doctors and coaches there, and there'll be a lot of different technologies and massage therapists and so forth. So check it out and see if this is something you might like. So Shauna, I'm so excited to have you on the show. So why don't you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Hi, Stacey. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I started off um, as an entrepreneur myself back in 2008, opened a home staging and design company and uh, built a nice thriving business. And um, over the years, started creating my own internal training programs, which then translated into online courses that I was offering to other stagers. And of course, that turned into the business coaching that I do today. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to work with female entrepreneurs specifically. And uh, I, I I like to call them my my accidental CEOs are kind of the main part of my business. And yeah. uh, these accidental CEOs are the people who knew they were going to start a business, but didn't realize they needed to run a company. Yeah. So a lot of the sort of those business aspects of things, the creating the complete vision, all that stuff. They're like, I just thought this was going to be fun. And now they're running the stress machine of an empire. Right. Uh, so I help kind of take a step back and and work on creating more sustainable strategies to help to avoid burnout, because as someone who has experienced burnout myself, uh, I know the impact of it. And it's something that I'm, I'm incredibly passionate about ensuring that uh, female entrepreneurs especially are really maintaining their physical and their mental well-being throughout growth, because uh, us women are uh, frankly, quite terrible at it. Um, <laughs> naturally, <laughs> we are really good at taking care of everyone yes. except for ourselves. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree totally. It's like, it's something, I don't know what it is, but we feel like we have to worry about everybody else, care about everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then we feel the shame and the guilt when we, it's time to take care of us. But yeah. then we don't realize that in order to take care of everybody else, we have to take care of ourselves first. And I think people lack that yeah. in their brains. Well, I think, I mean, in our defense, there's been this understanding throughout the times and throughout society that uh, we are supposed to be accommodating, we are supposed to be nurturing, we are supposed to, there's sort of these expectations yes. that are set on us. And the challenge is that we aren't taught how to do that without losing ourselves in the process and without exactly. losing our, our own self-care. So you can be all the things that you need to be to the people that you care about while still prioritizing yourself. It's about, you know, setting healthy boundaries and understanding how to say no. Uh, but most of us, yeah, we really struggle with that word no. And, yeah. and that's probably one of the hardest things. We're always afraid we're going to disappoint someone. We're going to let them down. And that's, that's really not the case. Um, you know, there's, but they're learning how to, to say no in a way that feels healthy for us, uh, where we can feel like we're still helping others. Right. Uh, so it's about, you know, kind of evaluating who you are, what you want and, and what is going to align with your values. I know for myself, um, back in 2017, I was at the absolute peak of my career business was just booming. And of course, by this time I've diversified, I've got all these different branches to the business going on. And I've got a team of staff working with me. And, um, you know, I, I, I was on such a, a high, it was, it was incredible yeah. to kind of you know, be able to look at this and say like, I built this, this is incredible. But right. the reality is I was also burning the candle at both ends in order right. to try to do it. And eventually my body just couldn't take it anymore. And I think one of the biggest challenges when it comes to burnout is it's one of those things that I, I can, I can almost hear people turning us off right now saying, I don't need to worry about burnout. I've never dealt with it. I know what I'm doing. I don't have any issues. And the challenge is that you don't know that you're on the, that you're burning out until you're burning out. Yes. So it's not something that we're practicing avoiding until it's either too late or just almost too late. And that's the case with everyone I talk to. You know, a lot of women will identify like, oh, I think I'm just burnt out. You probably are, but you didn't yeah. seek any help until we got to that point. And right. so I'm trying to change the conversation around that so that we're 
addressing burnout before it's really a thing. It's sort of like our physio exercises. I don't know if you've ever done physio, but like we're really good at doing them when we're in pain. And as soon as we start feeling better, we stop doing the physio exercises Mm -hmm. and the pain triggers us. I'm like, oh, right. I've got this thing I need to do. So with burnout, I feel that, um, you know, practicing saying no, practicing stress management, all of those things to avoid burnout are important to be doing before you're actually experiencing it, if possible. And if you're, if you're already experiencing it, it's not too late necessarily, but, um, but yeah, so back in 2017, like I said, I was at the peak of my career when I was burning the candle at both ends and ended up experiencing burnout myself. Uh, what happened was my body was just so stressed that uh, my immune system was compromised and I ended up getting shingles. I was only 39 years old. So I was very young to be getting shingles in the first place. And so, um, my, eventually the shingles cleared up and my body didn't, my body didn't heal from it. I was in a massive state of adrenal fatigue. It took me three years in the end to recover from that. Uh, And it was a very, very, very long and just labor intensive journey of like trying to, you know, do all the right things, working with my natural path. Um, I wasn't allowed to exercise for three years. I'm super active. So that was just very, very difficult for me to manage. I was bordering on depression, but the really good thing that came out of all of this is I was already a little systems processes oriented and with dealing with this burnout, I realized First of all, I need to figure out how to be able to do more work in less time. So I'm yes. not burning myself out again. Right. And then what happens when I'm dealing with different stressors, whether they're physical stressors or emotional stressors, how do I navigate those things? Right. So I've created these, these really great strategies now around all of that, that I like right now I'm in the process of launching a new program. So of course, you know, working some extra hours, we know what a launch is like, you know, we're working some yeah. extra hours and, yep. and some boundaries are being push to the limits. Yes. Uh, but I, I it's, it, I'm, I'm feeling sustained. I'm feeling empowered. I'm feeling uh, healthy throughout all of it because I'm still maintaining right. all the strategies that I created years ago so that I can do this. So it's not to say that there's not going to be times where you're not going to be overworked. Of course you are. We're all right. going to find ourselves in those moments, Yes. but there's, there's ways to be able to do it in a more sustainable way. So that's something that I do now is working with, with women, um, usually, in their forties, uh, right. you know, late thirties, forties into their fifties that are dealing with the stresses of everyday life while trying to manage a growing business and, yeah. and helping them to achieve that success without feeling like they have to cap it. That's the big thing too. Women often feel like we got to cap it somewhere yeah. because I, I don't have the capacity to grow. Right. There are ways that we can, that we can grow and achieve all the success that we know that we deserve without feeling like we're letting anybody else down along the way. Yeah. And I, I see so many women cap it and, and they think that they can't grow anymore because, and, and, and the thing too, is, is that it, when you have, when you have, when you have burnt, when you're burned out, like you said, you don't feel it to the end, but then you're also affecting your personal life is getting affected and oh, at yeah. work, you're, you're not doing as well of a job. You can't think clearly, you can't focus. And even like when I was working with Arianna Huffington, she had writ- written a book that time about sleep deprivation because she worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and she, she never slept until one day she just passed out on the floor and she almost died from it. It's wow. like, you know, some people we just, you know, and even myself included, I just, I feel like I have to do it all. You know, now I'm learning not to, you know, but it took how many years until I got to this point, sure. you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And again, I think that's what, why we need to start changing the conversation, but you absolutely nailed it though, in talking about how it, it, it uh, manifests itself in so many other ways in your life it, between your, your productivity, your um, ability to be able to interact with others, even just, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll use the example, like, do you ever feel like you're just on the edge of everything for on those dates where just you feel like the entire world is stupid for lack of a better word you just feel like everyone's dumb nothing's going right right that is burnout telling you to to stop for a moment and start taking care of yourself because if you are that close to the edge on things there's other things that are going on and imagine what's going to happen to your relationships to the people around you yeah Um, you could if you have staff this is exactly how managers end up losing staff. And it's it's really hard to maintain a business and your mental health all at the same time when you are on the verge of burnout. So yeah, it definitely manifests itself in so many ways. I'm glad that you brought that up. 
Now, when you see, when you, what, what do you tell women who are empowered women who want to grow, who want to excel, and they do start, you know, either they don't feel like they're burning out until they really hit it, or they are just not feeling themselves. They're not, they can't focus. Everything is all over the place. Like what, what do you tell them? Like what's, what's are some of the tips that you suggest that would help a person when they are overwhelmed, when they feel like they're doing it all and they're just like, they just feel like they're going in 17 different places at once. Yeah. And so whether they're actually experiencing stress in the moment or um, just a day-to-day thing, I'm big on practicing stress management, even when you don't need it, so that you're building mm-hmm. up that muscle memory for being yeah, able to practice like it. So, uh, so one of the things, for example, and everyone's going to find what works for them. For me, for example, one of my best stress management techniques is to go for a walk. Mm-hmm. I have a clear head after just a 15, 20 minute walk. Doesn't need to be a long amount of time. Right. I've got a system for being able to just like throw on a pair of shoes, walk out the door within seconds, basically, and just get out there and take a break from everything and come back to it. Right. Um, and so like I said, everyone's kind of got different things, but I go for those walks, even when I don't need them. Yes. And so things like journaling, things like, um, evoking the senses, this is the biggest thing evoking your senses. So, uh, for me, like I love, um, lavender smells, uh, different scents. I love a nice cup of tea. So a cup of tea is, is giving me the physical touch. It's giving me the yeah. scent. It's giving me the nourishment. It's so it's giving me that taste. It's giving me, look at yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. I'm drinking matcha tea right now. <laughs> Perfect. You know, so, um, we all have to find there's, I mean, I could go on for days about all the different things you can do for stress management, but the reality is you have to figure out what works for you. So what helps you feel calm? What helps you feel centered? And then practicing that daily so that when you are in a stressful situation, you can practice those techniques. You can take a step back and allow yourself to be able to take a moment to take care of yourself. Uh, But the biggest thing when it comes to those stressful moments is identifying what the stressor is. Okay. We can name it. We can address it. Right. So we've got to first name what it is. And before you, I tell people to go and name it. I don't mean saying it's a person's name. Yeah. They may be impacting things, but what is the actual circumstances? What is the situation? And then dissect that into what can I control? And what mm-hmm. can I not control? Right. And then focus on the things you can control because right. those things that you can't control. So what can't we control? We cannot control anything that has already happened. Yes. Period. Full stop. It's happened. Yes. You cannot erase it. Yes. <laughs> Especially in today's world. You cannot erase something once it's been done. Exactly. Can you fix it? Yes. But don't dwell too much on the this, this happened and therefore I'm stressed. Okay. It's right. done. Right. Sure. You might need to go back at some point and do a postmortem to figure out if it's something you need to avoid in the future. How do we avoid that? Absolutely. Yeah. That is valuable, but spending too much time focusing on what's happened or who you believe caused it. Right. Um, you know, that's not healthy. Instead yeah. focus on what can I be doing right now? and yeah. release the rest of it. And this is, again, it's a muscle you got to practice every single day, just like any other habit, just like, just like building up fitness muscles. It's something that really needs to be practiced. And I will admit, I am not perfect at it. I don't find me someone who is, I mean, yeah. but there are, it's, it's amazing how easy it is to release stress when you can put a name to it and identify what you can and cannot control. Oh, I, I agree a hundred percent. I always used to say over and over and I still do it. The past is the past. We cannot change the past. We focus on the present and we make, we make adjustments in our lives now to, to create a more fulfilling, productive future in our lives. Absolutely. And I just like keep that in my head. And I, I focus on, like you said, the past, I always emphasize myself, the past is the past. We cannot change the past. And I always keep that in my head, knowing that doesn't matter. There's no reason to dwell on it because we could stress ourselves out so bad just by sure. focusing on the past. Because most people don't let go of the past, and most people right. don't know how to learn from the past because they're so deep dwelled into the past, and that's gonna make your stress level higher. And that could even, you know, assist with the burnout too. Absolutely. If your body is focusing its energy on trying to process that. 
you know, it's taken away from the energy that you have for other things. It's using up, you know, very important fuel that you have essentially. Like we, we all have a finite amount of fuel and energy every single day. Yeah. And so where do we really want to spend that? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I have found incredibly valuable, like I said, my walks are great, clear the mind, get in touch with nature, but I get it. That might not be for everyone. Some people physically can't do it as well. And right. I understand there's limitations, you know, so figuring out what works for you. Um, journaling is another big one for me though. And yeah, I, like journaling. I, I also like saying journaling doesn't have to look a specific way. Yes. Um, there's a ton of different journals out there that can give you prompts and guidelines. Yeah. I've got my own prompts that I use for my journal. But the reality is that journaling can be anything. So one of the one of the ways that I like to associate with journaling, because I find that a lot of people, a lot of our stress comes from ways that we feel other people have impacted us in some way. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Business or personal. And I think this is especially true for women, though. We don't always feel comfortable saying what we actually want to say. Right. And frankly, it may not always be productive to say the things we actually want to say. Yeah. So you've heard about, you know, the whole like write an email and then don't send it, review it the next day and then decide if you still want to send it. Right. Kind of that idea, you know, sometimes it's journaling is just the conversation you want to have with this person, all the things you want to say to them. Yes. And what I find happens when I do that is um, I'm very big on one of the phrases that, that I live by is lead, but lead with curiosity. I like that. And So when I start journaling and I have this conversation, I am realizing that in order to have a one-sided conversation, I need to make a whole lot of assumptions. Yes. So instead of making those assumptions, I also write down what questions would I like to ask this person? Mm, I like that. That helps me to find a more productive way to potentially have a conversation with them if I need to have a conversation with them. I and like sometimes that. you might end up getting to the end and just saying, you know what, it's not going to be productive to have a conversation. So let's not bother. Right. But you can't have both sides of of the dialogue. You can't say, well, I'm going to say this. And then I know, I just know they're going to say this in return. Right. Do you actually know if instead of speaking and stating your piece, you ask some questions, could Mm -hmm. that be more productive? Exactly. Um, You know, and, and, and there are some people that sometimes it's just not possible to have those conversations. I think that's one of the most unsettling things. Yeah. I love my closure to things. So there's nothing more unsettling to me than feeling like things have been left unsaid. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes that is really what's best. And so I find journaling really helps with that as well. Oh, I, I love journaling. I, I, I think it's I great. That. I like the ideas that you you put because sometimes if you get it out, you you sometimes you don't need to say it anymore because you, you got it out. And then I like mm-hmm. the idea of asking questions and then, you know, and just thinking about what you would say, you know, and you don't have to necessarily ask the person, but then you could also, you know, you're just putting, you're organizing your thoughts because sometimes when we're so upset or burned out, we can't, we don't really think straight. We're like all over the board in our head. And I, I think Absolutely. that's great. I think that's great. Yeah. And it helps you to also sometimes kind of check yourself a little bit when you're asking these questions, you're realizing just that there's, there are some unknowns to things and perhaps the person is not intentionally. I think that's one of the biggest things we often um, lack that benefit of the doubt in terms of what someone's intentions are. So yeah. even just asking the question, what was your intention with this? You know, what did you, what were you trying to do? Yeah. Um, you know, because we assume potentially they're trying to hurt us or they're trying to manipulate us. Like there's usually these negative associations with it. Yeah. And the reality is if you have a conversation with them, they, they might be completely oblivious that they've done anything to even upset you. Yeah. You know, so it's a uh, benefit of the doubt is definitely huge. And so asking those questions kind of re- is a good reminder that benefit of the doubt um, is the way to lead these conversations, whether they're in your head or with the actual person. Yeah. And I think too, is yeah. like, sometimes you will never be able to have that conversation, like you said. So sometimes it's, it's good to, to practice that you know, dealing with those people in a different way, knowing what their personality is or what their own issues are and not feel like you always have to have the last word because sometimes it's better not to and and to do exercises, like you said, to journal, get it out because there are people mm-hmm. you just can't talk to and you they can never be wrong. And, you know, they have their own, you know, health issues and their own mental issues and you're never going to have those conversations you want. And we also, we tend yeah. to think, we forget that everybody's their own different person. So what we think is not necessarily the same thing that they're going to think and react the same way. 
Absolutely. We're all on our own journey, right? And we don't know the various factors. And, uh, you know, I use the example often of, um, imagine that you're driving, driving down the road and somebody cuts you off. And your first instinct, of course, is to get super upset because yeah. how dare they? Um, but how often have you cut somebody off without meaning to? Right. Right. Like there's mistakes just happen. Yeah. You know, um, I was driving with a friend of mine and he got super upset because we're driving on, we're in two lanes and we're in the far right lane. And everyone knows anyone, you know, in the area knows if you're in that lane, the idea is you're going to turn right. Technically you can go straight in that lane, but no one likes per a person stuck there going straight. Cause then you can't be turning right when the yeah, light's yeah, yeah. red. And he's very upset because the person in front of them clearly is not turning right. And I said, well, you know, I can understand that, but you know, they might not be from around here or perhaps they're turning into the next driveway right past the lane. They didn't want to try to cut over and cut somebody yeah. off. They could have meant to change lanes, but they couldn't get into the other lane fast enough. And by the time they realized it, it was too late. And I'm giving all these excuses and he's just looking at me. He's like, you really are about the benefit of the doubt, aren't you? <laughs> you know, there's so many different circumstances that we can assume that they're just an idiot and just oblivious and just trying to ruin your day. But I think yes. the reality is that that's probably not true. Right. They're probably not actually trying to ruin your day. Just like someone, try someone who cuts you off probably didn't set out with the intention exactly. to cut you off, you know? Exactly. So why are we going to let that ruin our day now? Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk over the years about road rage and how the only person who suffers from road rage is you. Exactly. The person that person you're upset with, they've moved on with their day. They have no idea that they've even done anything potentially. Yeah. So, you know, why are we, why are we hanging on to that? That's just going to, um, you know, upset us for the rest of the day. And if we hang on to it, it's going to impact so many other things. So if we can release those things, yeah. I'm using road rage as an example, but so many things that happen to us every single day. And if we can release those as opposed to hanging on to them, um, it positions us that much better to be able to handle different things that are being thrown at us. And oh, let's definitely. face it as women, especially so much is thrown at us on a daily basis. Yes, yes, it is. And and, and it's like we, we feel obligated. That maybe that motherly instinct, you don't even have to be a mother. You just some, sometimes yeah. you just have those qualities, you know, and it's like you feel like you have to get this done and do this and and be good to this person and and saying no, you know, it's it, it is a very hard thing to do, too, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we are by nature. We are a, a nurturing breed essentially. And it's yeah. not to say that men are not nurturing. Like this is not trying to, you know, divide gender lines by any means, but um, women do tend to find themselves in more of that nurturing caregiver role. Yeah. It does come more naturally. There's a whole lot of science and biology that actually backs all of this up. Right. Um, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just as the world continues to evolve and more demands are put onto us, we need to understand what, what it is that needs to give. And we do need to start allowing ourselves permission to yeah. prioritize ourselves and prioritize our own self-care and self-care doesn't have to be a spa day. I think this is the other misconception too, was that women used to get like one day a year, maybe that they'd go to the spa, spend the day relaxing with their phone off and no kids and no one de making demands of them. That's actually not self-care mm -hmm. because that's a fantasy illusion. Yeah. We need to practice it on a daily basis. What can we be I doing agree. to take five minutes for ourselves here, 20 minutes for ourselves there, or even if it's an hour that we need, like whatever that looks like, we need to set those boundaries. So, um, you know, set up healthy habits for ourselves um, is definitely the first key. The more we're not taking care of ourselves physically, the harder it's going to be for us to take care of ourselves mentally too. So, um, you know, eating well, exercising, um, whatever that looks like. I'm not like, yeah, <laughs> I know, I know you and I are very similar in, in our, activity levels and our commitment to health and wellness. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think that there's a, a mold that everyone needs to fit into right. to work for them. It's just a matter of making some healthy choices and exactly and, and making decisions about what it is that you will and will not do. Uh, one of the things that I, I love to practice is rules for myself mm -hmm. because if you, it's, it's sort of like if you go to a company and uh, you want to return an item, they've got a policy behind that, right? Yeah. So they might bend it every now and then, but they're, if they're going to make an exception, you need to kind of make a case for why an exception should be made. Right. Same thing if you create rules for yourself. So for myself, for example, one of my rules is I don't drink during the week. I right. only drink on weekends when I'm not working the next day. Yes. And so if someone offers me a drink on a Tuesday, it's easy for me to say, no, that's okay. Thank you. I don't drink on Tuesdays. I don't drink during the week. No one's questioning it. And also, I mean, I'm using alcohol as an example. This could be any type of rule yes. that you've created for yourself, of course. Right. But, um, but because the rule 
it's not a negotiable. If I said, no, I don't, I don't think I'm going to have a drink tonight. Yeah. Well, now my brain is kind of like, oh, but you could like, it's, it's a different trigger internally. So the conversation yeah. that we're having, whether it's out loud or in our own head has to be a certain way. So when we make rules for ourselves, those are non-negotiables. Yeah. And so for me, uh, you know, so Super Bowl Sunday is a great example of, you know, so many people are like, oh, did you, you had a couple of drinks, didn't you? No, because I was, it was a weeknight. I was working the next day, right. oh, but it was Super Bowl Sunday. I'm like, oh, I had the conversation with myself. I asked myself if I wanted to justify a drink for Super Bowl Sunday, but then I have yeah. to go through, well, what, what are the repercussions of this? Why do I have this rule in the first place? Does Super Bowl Sunday really count in my mind as a reason to have a drink? And right. in the end, because the Super Bowl went into overtime, I'm so glad I didn't have a drink because I was exhausted as it was by the time I went to bed. It was bed. a long game. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long game. <laughs> you know, so, and, and the other part of it for me, I was like, you know, it's a Sunday night. I have five full work days ahead of me still. Yes. And I've got to be at my absolute best. I've got to bring my best state every single day to myself, to my clients, to my staff, uh, as well as my friends and family. So I know that having that drink will mean that I won't sleep as well. Not sleeping as well means I'm not doing my best the next day. And all these things yes. are compounded. And again, yes. I am using alcohol as just an example. This is not to say you're not yeah. allowed to drink alcohol ever. This is, I, Believe me, that's not what I'm saying, but it's about no, creating those rules for yourself of what are your non-negotiables. And maybe I know some people have a rule for themselves that they meditate 20 minutes every day. All right, yeah. then don't break that rule. And if once in a blue moon, you've got to break it, that's fine. But why are you making that exception and, and really justifying that so that we're setting those boundaries for ourselves, whether it's it's working out, it's going for a walk, meditating, um, or just, you know, I, 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 I promise I will be phone free for dinner with my family. Yes. You know, all these things are, are rules that we create for ourselves. What is it that you need to be able to help you recharge every day yes. and bring your best self everywhere you go? Exactly. Exactly. I find it like once we create, once we break those old habits and we start really healthy habits, make it a lifestyle change. Don't say to yourself, I yes. have to do it. I have to do it. Just start practicing it and just make it part of your life you know and then when you think about it like that then you just it becomes natural after a while and you don't even think about it you're just doing it you know and you know I think it's really hard for for empowered women who are trying really trying to make something of themselves to stop you know I know I had this problem for so long it was like like we were talking about earlier I was like I finally started to hire people and and do and take things mm -hmm. off my back because I feel like women think they have to do it all you know and they don't, you know, and it, it's okay. Especially if there's other women they can hire to empower them to do what they do well. You know? Yeah, exactly. And I actually, I want to circle back to something that you just said, because you hit on a really, really good point when you said about how you have that conversation of, I have to do this. That is the wrong language. You're absolutely right. You yeah. choose. Everything is a choice. Yes. So you yes. choose and do things. So if you're saying, well, I have to take my kids to school, I choose to take my kids to school. Exactly. Exactly. You know, those are choices. And so those are things. And uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of the book is. It's uh, Mark Rosenberg's um, triggers. He talks about it, about how, you know, we are everything that we're doing in life is a choice. And so yes. we have to reframe that conversation we're having with ourselves. Yes. And if we're feeling like we have to do something, we really don't want to be doing it, then, we, then we've got to reevaluate that. Is that something that should just be eliminated? Exactly. Um, you know, and and, and if, if not, then take the joy up like put that joy back into it and, and make sure that you are taking it for what it is and, and seen as, as a privilege and an honor. Um, I'm a caregiver for my, my dad. He has MS, he has zero mobility. My mom and mm -hmm. I share the responsibilities of, of caregiver. Yeah. Um, at no point have I ever said, I have to take care of my dad. I right. choose to choose. help my dad yes. and support him. Yes. And at no point have I ever felt any sort of obligation Right. to do it because it's, it's an honor to be able to support him in ways that he supported me and he still exactly. supports me. Right. Uh, you know, so it's, there's still that trade-off of course, but, uh, is it a burden? Absolutely. Yes. Um, but there's again, all the more reason why I need to make sure that I'm practicing all these healthy habits so that yeah. I don't ever feel burdened. Right. Uh, because yes, it is. It does impact me. It It's a factor in every decision I make and how I schedule my days uh, you know, how I coordinate things with my mom, how my relationship with my mom exists, because we're often tag teaming. So we have to make a, a focused effort in order to spend time, just the two of us at times yeah. as well, which is a real challenge. Right. Uh, you know, so all these things, all these things are a choice though. And we could have chosen to let it 
destroy our family and bring us all down and wear us all out. And yeah, uh, you know, we've chosen not to. So yeah. I love that. When you said that, I just wanted to take a poster board and like put it up there. <laughs> I, I have, to. I, choose. No, I choose to, you know, I'm like, yes. I love it. I love it because it's true. You know, so many people say I have to do X, Y, and Z. I have, I have to, I have to, but we don't, it's a choice. It's a choice. Yes. And we can construct our choices and we can construct our life anytime at any place. Right. It's our choice, you know? And I think once people get that in their head and they accept it because some people can be in denial, lots of great things could happen. But I know, Absolutely. I know that you, when you're talking about your father being a caretaker, I was during COVID, I was caretaking for three of my close relatives and, and I was, it was, it was a lot. It was a, it, you know, it's, 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 it's very stressful to have to be a caretaker because you're caring for yourself and you're caring for another life as well. Mm -hmm. And that needs special attention. And I think people have to realize too, especially if you're an empowered woman and you have a business and now you're caretaking for somebody and you have other responsibilities. Plus, you have to learn how to balance that all out and make sure you go to bed with a with a, a not a heavy heart, but it, you have a soft heart and be able to have all those negative energies and emotions that may have driven and clustered to, during the day. Let it go before you go to bed. What is your Absolutely. impact on that? What's your thoughts on that? Oh, I love you know what. Um... It's, it's funny when you're talking about going to bed, I, I, I consider that kind of the ultimate reset too, is when you go to bed. Um, but to your point though, you can't have that reset unless you are clearing yourself of anything throughout the day that has stressed you out. So um, I, you know, there's a lot of talk about making sure that you're reducing screen time before you're going to bed and don't eat before bed and, and all these different things, you know, you've got to choose the routine that works best for you, but what, what allows you to be able to go to go to bed with a peaceful mind is that yeah. spend a few minutes with your with your cat or dog is it um reading your child a bedtime story yeah. is it journaling is it exercising you know what is it that helps you to go to bed so for some people it's even just just the nighttime routine of washing your face and you know those little smaller self-care things yeah. that we all do to, you know, try to maintain our, our physical health right. uh, in some way, you know, what does all of that look like? And, um, you know, but finding what that routine is for you, I think that is so important. Like you said, you know, they, they say never go to bed angry when you're in a marriage, right. but the same thing actually holds for your own self relationship, right? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think when we have so much and we don't take care of ourselves, it, it travels, it stays with us. And that's where the problem exactly. begins, you know, and they say 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And then when you were mentioning how you got sick and you got the shingles, I was thinking about when all my stress was in my life was at a real peak. I had developed neurovirus, which is supposed to be a couple of days and gone and it ended up almost killing me and putting me in the ICU. And it's like, oh, wow. and I swear to God, it's because the stress just broke my immune system down. It kind of opened me up to like, everything. And I, I feel like people don't realize that, but stress, getting rid of that stress, learn how to balance your life. Like you're talking about using all these things that you're talking about, all these different types of exercises and strategies and tools, you know, not only can it, it help you prevent burnout, but it can give you such a more happy, healthy, and productive life as well. I think. Absolutely. And, it, you know, kind of going back to what we talked about with um, manifesting physically, you know, you were talking about, the, you know, the stress and what it does to your body. Another big thing that it does, and especially in women, is it raises your cortisol levels. Yeah. And so, and it's, and this is, so for all the women who are listening right now, if you are struggling with losing weight. Yes. <laughs> stress management, effective stress management. And again, daily, not just when you're stressed. Practicing stress management, even when you're not stressed, yes. allows you to be able to navigate stressful situations in a much healthier way. Yes. And that will allow you to reach the physical goals that you're trying to reach. And, you know, again, everyone's journey is different. So I'm not saying that everyone needs to be a size two or any, that's not what we're working towards here. Right. But if you don't feel healthy physically, if you're not happy with what you how you feel, how you look. And again, that's not, it's not just about the, the aesthetics of it, but it's mm -hmm. the, are your knees aching? Are you feeling tired all the time? You know, right. all these things that come from carrying extra weight potentially. Right. Your, if your cortisol levels are elevated, you will not lose that weight. 
exactly. is one of the hardest things for women to do. And this is a this is a conversation for another time, of course, uh, yeah. because I mean, for myself, when I got shingles, I actually gained 30 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, sorry, I gained 20 pounds. I have since lost 30. So right. I am, I am even lower weight than I was when I first started this journey. And that wasn't even my intention. My intention was just get healthy. But the more I started being able to practice some of these techniques yeah, on, it was so easy once I figured it all out, but there's right. things like, for example, I'm a runner. I love running. Yeah. Um, running for any women listening, it is the worst thing you can do for losing weight <laughs> once you hit a certain age <laughs> because of how it affects your cortisol levels. So for me to be able to continue being a runner, I need to make sure that I am doing a lot to manage my cortisol levels right? because otherwise I would never be able to stay as healthy as I actually am. And I wouldn't be able to have the endurance to do the running that I'm doing. Exactly. So, but I choose to run. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> pay you the know, price. So there's a price, you know, like there are things I like to do and I know, okay, it might not be the best thing for me, but I really enjoy it. So then I do what you do. I kind of compensate. Okay. If I do this, but then I put, I incorporate X, Y, and Z, I know it will balance it out, you know, and then you right. think about it in that respect, you know, and it's like, you I know, love that. Yeah. So, so it's like, you know, okay, you know, I went to White Castle and I had a, I had a little burger. So the next couple of days, I'm going to be really good. You know, it's like, so it's like, you know, you just right. like, compensate you know like when you're doing things you really love and you know that maybe it's not the greatest thing for you you know you just you just compensate so you do things that to help out your body that you know will even it out and cortisol is a big thing especially as we get older you know so many women suffer from high cortisol and and most women don't even realize they have it until if you go for a blood test that's the only way you're going to find out and most women you're supposed to have low cortisol in the in the morning, and then it goes elevates a little in the at nighttime. But most women, when they wake up, if they had their blood test, they would know that it's still shooting high, even though that's supposed to be the best time to get your cortisol level, yeah. you know. But you know, it happens as we're getting older, and we, as we get into perimenopause, menopause, you know, postmenopause, that's when your cortisol really starts to get high, and that's when everything mm-hmm. starts to slow down. So, what can we do to help our body, you know, especially if you're an empowered woman with a business, what else can you do? Like you were talking about health, talking about different things. What can I get incorporated in my life? Maybe like you were saying, some different types of exercises, the way we eat, you know, the way we handle stress, you know, and when you're talking about different ways of handling stress, I was thinking about um, the chakra bowls and like, I always used, I still have have them in my room. They're like sound bowls, they call them. And Mm -hmm. each one has a different vibration. So I would slow down my breathing and then I would close my eyes. I would either clear my mind or think of something really relaxing, like a beach or a dove flying in the air or something just very relaxing. Mm-hmm. And then I would focus on the sound and then I would slow my breathing mm-hmm. down. And then as I was clearing my mind after I did it, it's amazing. But between listening to the vibrations and the, and, and, and slowing down your breathing, it could relax someone like even person like an empowered woman when you're exercising they show there's meditations you could do just when you're sitting in your chair you can you know they show you closing one nostril breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing Mm -hmm. out real slowly do it to the other one clear your head close your eyes and then you slowly open your eyes and just stretch a little bit in your chair and 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 that is something so simple like that could help somebody if they're you're absolutely right an empowered yeah or businesswoman it's a huge reset. Yeah. Sometimes we don't have the time to, you know, go for a walk or make ourselves a cup of tea, but just doing some light breathing exercises. Yeah. One of my favorites is uh, four seconds in hold for four seconds and four seconds yeah. out. I like that. And that the hold, oh, it just, it fills your lungs in a way that you're, you don't do naturally yeah, and really opens things up and just is such a release. So um, there's a ton of great apps out there for breath work that, um, you know, if, if someone's not comfortable learning some of the breathing techniques themselves, follow along with an app. There's a lot of great yeah. ones out there. I know when I first got my, my Apple watch, it would tell me to breathe. And I turned yes. that app off because it was really annoying. Like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I turned mine to do off it. also. <laughs> yes. I think most people have. And so I think people kind of have this negative association with breath work, but when we're doing it purposefully on our terms, you know, yes. Um, but there is something to be said for, yeah, just stopping and taking a few deep breaths, whatever it looks like. And yeah, if you can't go for a walk, maybe you just want to stand outside for a moment, just breathe in a little bit. Um, 
again, figure out kind of what, what fuels you. Like I am someone, I need the outdoors. I yeah. know I need the outdoors. I live in Canada. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. I am outside pretty much every single day. If I can breathing in some of that air, I drive a convertible for good reason. I need to breathe in that air. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be like point out for a full walk. It just means I need to go outside, but right. again, not everyone needs that outdoor breathing. Maybe they just need some standard breathing at their desk. Maybe it's, you know, lighting a candle and just getting that scent. Um, you know, one of my favorite things I was talking about lavender scents earlier. Have you oh, heard of shower bombs? Lavender. Yes. Yes. I, I, I have bought them. They're great. Oh my They're God. They're so them. fantastic. They are so good. So a lot of us think of bath bombs as in like, who has time to sit in a bath and soak with this lovely fizzling bath bomb, but now they're shower bombs which are basically um, activated by steam. So you just put them in the base of the shower, the steam activates them and it just fills up your entire shower with this aroma. I like the lavender ones. There's tons yeah. of different aromas out there, mm -hmm. but I find the lavender ones. I don't use it every day in the shower, but I would say at least once a week, I'm using a shower bomb. And again, not because I need it, <laughs> because I choose to yes. as a part of my routine. Yes. And it's very calming. I love it. Yeah. I do that also. And I like, I like, at, it's funny because sometimes I, I tell my husband, do not turn the lights on. And when I'm taking a shower, I dim the, the bathroom. So it's nice yeah. and kind of dark. And then after I get out of the shower, I'll open the lights on. But it was kind of my like meditation mode, just the hot water, you know, the shower bomb, just breathing oh, yeah. it in. It's just like, as I'm, as I'm taking my morning shower, I'm feeling relaxed. So when I get out of there, I feel good. Then I open the light and yeah. come back to reality. But then, you know, but that moment, it's just like a common way. And who knows, maybe it will reduce some of the women's cortisol levels by a few points if they start incorporating right? things like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for some people, maybe it's not a hot shower. Maybe it's a cold shower. Yeah. Maybe it's a cold plunge in the morning. You know, there's right. a ton of science to back up the, the incredible benefits of cold plunges. Yeah. Um, and there's so many products on the market now as well, but it doesn't have to be fancy Just step into a cold shower and that'll do the trick. Oh and yeah. I know so many people that swear by it. Yes. I've done it. I 100% appreciate it. It's not for me. Yeah. It's not what I'm going to do on a daily basis, but I, I see the value in it. And who knows, that can change one day too. I mean, I'm yeah. constantly finding different things where, I mean, I, I never thought I'd be a morning person. I was this right. night owl for most yeah. of my life when I was younger and Me in my too. 20s. Yeah, yeah. And now 5 a.m., I am hopping out of bed and I get up early I now too. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine not getting up at 5 a.m. You know, like anything later just feels like I've overslept and I feel like yeah. I wasted my day and you know, but that's not to say that everyone needs to become a 5 a.m. morning person. Right. Maybe, maybe what you do need is getting up 30 minutes earlier than you are currently yeah. to get some time to yourself. If you're feeling like your morning routine is rushed, if your cortisol levels are high in the morning, if you feel like you wake up stressed, maybe you need to wake up 30 minutes earlier and right. to wake up 30 minutes earlier might mean you're going to bed 30 minutes earlier. Yeah. So setting these routines and setting these habits is, is key. Yeah. I yeah, I think, that, I mean, I could talk for days about different healthy habits that, uh, you know, that we can incorporate to, um, you know, try to overcome a lot of the stress management. Um, I think the, the bottom line is to just be kind to yourself, just yeah. recognize that, that you need, you need self-care. And so, and that means having kind conversations with yourself too. Yes. We need to be forgiving of ourselves and, yes. you know, we can make mistakes and it doesn't mean that you just get a free pass. If you make a mistake, like, well, I was told to be kind to myself. So, <laughs> you know, no big deal. <laughs> you got to learn from them, of course, but you can't, again, pass to the past. You can't dwell on things. So how do you make things exactly. right and move forward and, yeah. um, you know, lean on the support systems that you have, build up support systems. If you don't currently have them, I mean, Look around who you're surrounding yourself with That's and big. see how they're contributing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not to say that you have to cut people out. It's not that dramatic necessarily, but maybe people just take up a little less space in your life. Exactly. Exactly. Value. I agree a hundred percent. I always feel like mm -hmm. positivity, kindness, and gratitude have those three things in your life and what a change it makes in, in, Love that. you know, it's just it, in the way you think in the way you act towards people, in the decisions you make in life and, and mm -hmm. people see it. Like if you have a positive person walk in the room, they glow, they have a special glow to them. When you have yeah. someone who's negative, 
They they look like they hate the world or they have just a very glum looking face. They don't have that shine. They don't have that glow to them. And yeah. you could just like you could you could just you could feel the energy sometimes, you know, if you're really in tune, you can feel a positive person and you can feel like Absolutely. a negative person, you know, body language, energy, facial expressions, you know. But what a what a difference if you can take, you know, positivity, gratitude and kindness and just like incorporate that in your daily I life. I love that. I love that. I actually have kind of a funny story to go along with that too. Well, funny, I suppose, depends on the, how you look at it. <laughs> so um, my, I, I drive a Mini Cooper convertible. Mm -hmm. Love this car. It's, I mean, anyone who's a Mini Cooper driver especially knows, like we're very passionate about our cars. <laughs> it was vandalized a few weeks ago. Someone burned a hole through my soft top and then slashed it. Oh. Uh, so it did some major, major damage. Had to get the whole thing replaced. And so I, I take it to, you know, BMW, Mini Cooper, um, and they're, you know, doing the evaluations. I, I had to wait probably about an hour, hour and a half or so while they're assessing yeah. and everything else. It was fine. And so there's a, another gentleman there we're talking and, you know, first talking about how the sun hasn't been out several weeks. And it's been this, you know, we've set records with how little we've seen of the sun um, and I said, yeah, you know, but the temperatures have been kind of nice and, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's not, it's not bad for, I can't remember what it was that I, that I found it on it, but, you know, kind of came up with something positive for it. Right. And then um, he's talking about something else. And I was like, yeah, but you know, there's this. And I was constantly just this, yeah, but yeah, but, and so he asked what I was there dealing with. And I explained the vandalism. He's like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Like, why would someone do this? If, I don't know. I mean, it's, who am I to understand why, what, what motivated someone to do it? I'm just concentrating on just getting it fixed. You know, I said, at least it's January. So I wouldn't be putting the top down that much right now anyway. Right. So I'm not going to be super upset. Like, so it'd be different if it was in July and I want to put my top down, you know, it's January in Canada. I'm good. You know, so, um, and it was, just, it was just going on and on and on. And he finally just called me out and he's like, you really are like the person who finds the silver lining in everything, aren't you? <laughs> and it's funny because I've never necessarily considered myself like an extremist with it. Yeah. But because it's become such a regular habit of mine. Right. I do genuinely try to look for the positive in all things. It doesn't mean I don't get upset about things. It doesn't mean that I don't like, did I take a moment to grieve what happened to my poor baby? Of course I did. Right. But at the end of the day, it's just a car, you know, yeah. and like it is what it is. In all honesty, my bowling ball was stolen. I was much more upset about that part of it because it was my first bowling ball and that was very Aww. devastating. But, um, you know, I'm looking for a new ball and still trying to find the old one. If it turns up, I've said like, I will not press charges. I just, no questions asked. I just want my ball back, you know? Yeah. Um, because there's, there's, what's done is done. I don't really care to, to seek any sort of vengeance on anyone. I just, yeah. just want to move forward, you know? Right. That's what it is, so... And who knows, who knows what the motivation was. Maybe someone was really hungry and thought they could get something that they could sell. And I'm not saying that justifies that. I'm saying that yeah. I don't know what their circumstances are for all. I know they're, they're battling mental illness and they thought they were saving me by breaking into my car like that because there was some evil spirit. And I mean, I honestly don't know who yeah. knows what it was, but right. how, who am I to speculate on what it is? And it could yeah. have just been malicious intent. It could have been. Right again, what's done is done. So it yeah. is what it is, but yeah. I think so yeah. So it, it was kind of funny though. This, this, this guy just calls me out and he's like, you're just, everything's a silver line. I'm like, well, there's always a silver that. lining to be found. Yeah. yeah well, so I, I, I love what you're saying though, about positivity. Grab too. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, if you don't live like that, imagine how life would be, you know, oh, life is hard enough as it is. Why, why make it harder for ourselves? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Trying I, I want to live my best life. I'm not getting any younger. Literally, right. we don't get younger. We yes. literally get older only. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so take a look at your life. Um, take a look at the life that you've already led, the life that's behind you and the life that's ahead of you and what you can do right now to live your best life. It's never too late to live it's your best life. Never and too late, for sure. No. And so, you know, there's um, there's something to be said for living for the moment and living for the future. Um, and, but don't take that future for granted. You just never no. know. You never, never know. Happen. Everyone assumes that you're going to be here forever, but we don't know what the next day may bring. So take, take it, take, live right now in the now moment and make the best of it. And if mm -hmm. you knew that you were, weren't going to be here tomorrow, how would you be today? You know, you would be living yeah. it up there best to best, but live like that, you know, live, you know, enjoy life. And if you had to take everything we talked about today, 
what would you tell the listeners? Like, what would you, some of the important factors that you really want to emphasize in this conversation? I think um, one of the biggest things I want to leave everyone with is um, you had talked about making like incremental steps each day, like like one step at a time. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things is we talked about a ton of things today about healthy habits and everything else you're not going to immediately be able to implement all of these tomorrow. So take a listen to everything that we've presented, what resonated with you, what can you start today? Uh, what can you plan for down the road? What can you work towards? But set some goals for yourself, but have some realistic expectations as well. You're not going to completely transform your routines, your habits, and your expectations overnight. Yeah. Um, but practicing it on a daily basis and mm -hmm. working towards things helps you to live that that life that you want to be living. And if you are looking at your day to day and feeling stressed out or unhappy or discontent in any way, you do have the power to change that. Yes. So instead of looking at, well, I have to do this, I have to do that. What are you choosing to do? And what are you choosing not to do? And what kind of changes can you make? But incremental, one step at a time. One step at a time. I love it. I love it. Yeah. This has been amazing, Shauna. Lynn, I agree. I, I love I just, it. I could talk to I you I so forever. enjoy this. Like, I know, I was just thinking the same thing. Like, and the time just like flew by. I'm like, well, how have we been talking for an hour now? This is incredible. Yeah, no, this has been, um, I, I enjoy everything that you that you share with your audience and your approach to things. And, you know, I, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's really important that we're putting, you know, healthy expectations out there and positive influences. So thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you. And, and before we go, just tell everybody the different services you provide and different things that you have. And I know that you have a special page you wanted to talk about and some mm -hmm. services that you provide for women and, and just go over briefly, like all the stuff that you do and how you can help others. Yeah, of course. My main focus is definitely, you know, helping female entrepreneurs to achieve the success without uh, burnout with with sustainability. So, um, you know, I, I offer one on one business coaching. I also have a fantastic group coaching program as well for people that you know want something that's a little bit uh, more in depth and it's got a lot of great detailed training to it, but they still get the support of me, but in a group context. So, uh, if you go to about shaunalyn.com forward slash the advisor, uh, you can check it out. We can set up a, a free assessment call for, to see whether or not coaching with me is, is the right fit for you. I'm always happy to, to have a chat about that. Um, there's some great resources there as well, but yeah, the main thing that I focus on is, is helping women to live their best life. Uh, in an empowered way and, um, and being able to pursue that entrepreneurship without sacrificing their own health and well-being while they're doing it. I love it. I love it. And one more time, tell them your, your website so they don't forget it. Yeah. So it's about shaunalyn.com forward slash the advisor and shaunalyn is spelled A-U. So uh, S-H-A-U-N-A-L-Y-N-N. -N. So about shaunalyn.com forward slash the advisor. Yeah. Check it out. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Shauna Lynn, for coming on the show. Thank you. And also everybody that she has her own podcast on the advisor and she'll will have all the information and you can go listen to her podcast. And she's going to do a lot more podcasts about empowered women and healthy living and how to really, you know, balance yourself and, and really achieve your goals. So stay tuned because Shauna Lynn is not going anywhere. She's going to be here and she's going to be here for a while. So listen to her podcast because they're really amazing. She has a lot of great advice. Thank you so Thank much, Shauna Lynn. I love you. Thank You're great. you. Same ditto. Thanks. <laughs> You have a great day. Thanks, you as well.